how long ago did you see it? Yesterday. Right now, polar bear seizures, lots of polar bear with a cup. Oh my god. They just. If you can't get your tent up, you die. Very little margin for error. Pushing the envelope too much here. Coffin Island, baby. My plan was to cross Baffin Island's Cumberland Peninsula via Akshayak Pass, a wind-ravaged corridor that is part of the far-flung Eowitak National Park, but it would take a week of walking along the Baffin coast just to reach the pass. My dog Buck and I left Ottawa, Canada early in the morning for a chain of flights that would eventually deposit us over 150 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. In a Callowit, we transferred into a turboprop and then headed for the mountain shrouded gravel runway of Pangnertum. Amazingly, there was another group of adventurers on my flight. They planned to take a long skidoo ride to drop them off right at the pass where they'd begin their trip. If all goes as planned, Pangnertum is where my trek would end. After leaving Pangnirtung, we enjoyed a spectacular flight over the Baffin Mountain with views of the ever-present Penny Ice Cap before we were deposited in the remote Inuit hamlet of Kikitarjuak. This is where my journey would begin. Here I am in Kikitarjuak, Nunavut. Right now, I'm well above the Arctic Circle. This is the first stop on my 18-day solo trek to cross Baffin Island. I'm going all the way to Pangnirtung. I have to walk a significant distance along the sea ice. And some of the dangers that I'm gonna be facing are polar bears, because at this time of year, the female polar bears come out of hibernation on land and they walk with their cubs out to the sea ice to hunt for seals. So I'm literally gonna be crossing their paths. And you know, it's a little bit concerning, but I have my dog Buck, who's an amazing bear alarm. Unfortunately, I don't have a firearm, which is making me much more scared, but I have a bear fence that I can put around my tent. So if a bear comes into that perimeter, it triggers it and fires a loud bang, I should be okay. Once I get into the pass and I'm on land, usually there's no bears there. Uh, the other concern is the weather too. I mean, this is the Arctic. Today's beautiful, but it could get really nasty really quick out here. So I'm prepared. I have a lot of gear. I'm gonna be hauling about 130 pounds. My dog Buck's gonna be hauling. And the two of us are gonna travel and hopefully if all works out we should make it there in 18 days and just stay in town for a bit to meet some people and uh, check it out it's really a uh, interesting place and absolutely gorgeous scenery here too a certain amount of polar bears each season that is monitored and the meat is eaten. Now I'm just doing all the final things to prepare for my trip. So having a good way to store fuel is super important. Oh. 
What's your name? Lisa. Lisa? Uh, my name's Jim. Nice to meet you. Jim? Yes, Jim, yeah. J-I-M. Thank you for helping. Good dogs, good dogs. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. Come on. a skidoo trail so I think it should be relatively easy going um, with hauling the toboggan. So how long ago did you see it? Yesterday. Out from there, uh, what do you call it? Hibernation? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, because I'm going through Iuatuk, uh, uh, I'm not allowed to carry a firearm either. Yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah. So are they, do you think they're just staying there or are they moving out onto the ice? Uh, I, they're, they're walking, I, ca I can't tell you. Okay. Yeah. They're looking for food, so yeah. I can't tell you. Okay. There, there might be another one. Yeah. Okay. They will know. Okay. And uh, is this going to take me to... Uh, no. No. Uh, file the skidoo truck. Okay. Uh, on this, that side. Okay. This skidoo truck here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's going to take... And I'm going right past the base of this cliff here. No, no, you're gonna go that way, then turn that way. Oh, this way? Yeah. Through that little opening there? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I see it. Yeah. Uh, I'll pass by tomorrow for sure. Yeah, okay, yeah. Because there's 11 people I have, I have to look after. Are you the one that, uh, oh, are you taking that group? Yeah, oh. yeah. That is pretty concerning. I was just about to start my walk and a guy came up in a snowmobile and told me that uh, there's a female and a cub polar bear right in Peng Fjord that they saw yesterday and they seem pretty concerned for me. They seem to think that that's the uh, main concern out here and uh, I would agree. So not exactly the kind of thing you want to hear right before you start. Now I'm going to call my wife Tori. She is pregnant and uh, it was very hard leaving to do this trek um, because you know I left her all alone and uh, our kid is due in uh, uh, about two months and it's our first. Um, so I'm just going to give her a shout and tell her that I'm okay and uh, you know, tell her there's nothing to worry about. I'm not gonna tell her about the polar bear situation. I'm gonna leave that out. I have a good satellite phone here I got from Road Post, but uh, the problem is that when you're in the pass, um, there's so many mountains, it's very hard to get a signal. Hello, Tori. Hey, babe, can you hear me? Hey, I'm just starting my trek right now. Do they, they tell me that I should be okay with just the bear bangers, that they work really well, so. Yeah. Yes, I promise. Love you too, bye bye. Bye. Well, 
not to making everything difficult. You know, it's uh, I love doing these trips, but right now I do them as my job. So to keep uh, paying the bills, you know, I gotta keep doing this because it's what I do. Um, and uh, it's definitely a blessing. I'm very lucky, but uh, definitely can be hard sometimes. But I'm just gonna stay positive and enjoy my trip because it's gonna be a good one. So just still walking here on the sea ice. Behind me is the open ocean and uh, really good trail here. So the snow's relatively hard packed. Uh, it's been a weird day traveling wise. I mean, the weather's been great, but the wind's been changing. So it'll be strong and then it'll go away. And it's meaning that I have to switch clothes a lot and oftentimes start overheating and have to pull off clothes and all of a sudden it gets really cold again. So I've been trying to manage that situation. So far so good, I think I have maybe another 2K left or something like that today to make my 12K. First day, so my stuff's heavier, I'm not used to the work, so yeah, it's pretty hard, it's pretty long, but uh, I should be done, you know, well before dark. It doesn't get dark till about nine here at that time, of, uh, at this time of year, which is awesome, so just gonna hope for good weather to continue and keep pushing on. Okay, so first night out in polar bear country. It's freaking absolutely beautiful here. And one of the things that's great is because we're north of the Arctic Circle, we get a lot of sun even at this time of year, but we're experiencing late winter weather here and spring weather is a whole different ball game. Spring weather means uh, weather systems colliding and lots of wet snow and blizzards. So I'm hoping that it holds out like this because this is awesome, but I'm sure I will hit some nasty weather at some point, probably closer to the end of the trip. Anyway, so right now I'm gonna get my tent set up. I'm gonna get my bare perimeter set up. First thing, feed the dog. 
I'm feeding Buck super high energy dog food that's meant for sled dogs. Because he's a sled dog, aren't you, Buck? Are you a sled dog? Come here, you sled dog. There you go, buddy. There you go, good boy. tent is a one-person canvas tent because it's canvas can run a Pullman stove in it for heat otherwise asphyxiation would be a major concern Hands are freezing. It's nice to have a pair of just work gloves when you're doing stuff like this around camp, moving around. And that way, mitts can be kind of clunky. Got to anchor these uh, snow stakes in a certain kind of way. Tighten this. Nice and tight. I'm gonna shovel snow on that flap. Man, I'm starving hungry right now. Pretty good first day though. I think I made it over 12K, which was my goal for today. not hard enough walking 12 days a day 12k a day oh, can't even talk properly Traveling is only a little bit of the work. Breaking down camp, cooking, etc., etc., filming. These are all things that are physically challenging and time consuming. That's how you set up a tent. 
Okay, well, that's about it for now. I'm gonna just finish shoveling snow around and get everything else I need to do done. I'm gonna set up my bear alarm fence too. To a perimeter fence made to scare away polar bears. It's a bunch of 12 gauge blank connected to pins on trip wires. And there's this little thing, a little slot that sticks in there like that. And if a bear comes into my tent area, at least one or two of them go off. Okay, one more. Done, get some food in me, crawl into bed.